Yeah, I just wanted to say thank you everyone for being here and hearing my story. Um, somebody I always like to tell people this, my NDE happened when I was 21 and people have always asked me, did I come back with any particular gifts or abilities? And I didn't, but the only thing that happened is that I have total and 100% recall of every single thing that I saw and experienced. So I guess in a way that can be looked at as a gift because I've never forgotten it. And all these years later, I have been just sharing my experience because I think it gives all of us hope to know that this isn't the only place that there is, that we're just here temporarily and that the other side really is our true home. But I want, I want to get started from the beginning so you all have an idea of how this all happened. I don't know, have, have a lot of you heard my story before? Just one? Okay. All right, good. So I'll start from the beginning. Um, I was 21, and I was riding the moped or a scooter. And I made a right turn down the street, and there was a squirrel in the middle of the road. So I went to turn right to avoid the squirrel. And many times what squirrels do is they, they turn the exact direction that you're turning. So I turned to the right. He turned with me. So I turned to the left and he also went to the left. So I turned back to the right again and I slammed into a tree. <clears throat> and I landed in such a way that on my right hand, I tore the tendons off the bones. So I had to go in for surgery. Well, I had never had any kind of surgery, nothing. This was the first surgery I was ever gonna have. So I'm in there in the operating room ready for the surgery and they go to give me the anesthesia. Well, something happened. And when the anesthesia got to my heart, I had an allergic reaction and my heart stopped and I officially died. I was dead clinically for seven minutes. They had to get the paddles, the whole nine yards to get me back, but I was gone for officially seven minutes. And during that seven minute period, something remarkable happened. And I found out a little bit later after I had it, that it, what I had had was called a near death experience. My mom helped me understand what had actually happened. Because back in 1987, there wasn't anybody talking about near-death experiences. I, the only thing my mom had read was a book by Raymond Moody, and it was called Life After Life. So she was able to help me piece together what had actually happened. All right, so the moment that I died on that operating table, it seemed like at the very next instant, I opened up my eyes and I was standing in the most beautiful, exquisite, gorgeous building I had ever seen. It was this marble building that was as long as you could possibly see. I, it, it was so long, I couldn't see the end of it. It was a long, beautiful corridor kind of a building. Off to the right, were these enormous, beautiful white columns. And they look like, the only thing I can describe to them is that is they look like Greek. They were Greek looking. Like, you know how, you know, the, the buildings in Greece have those beautiful white marble columns. That's what this looked like. And they were, they went all the way down as far as you could see. To the left of where I was were these doorways or these tunnels. And again, they went all the way down as far as you could see. And my first thought was when I got there, when I opened up my eyes, my first thought was, oh my gosh, this hospital is so much bigger than I thought. But I wasn't, I wasn't even in the hospital. And you have to remember that I had, during this whole process of everything I was shown, I didn't even know where I was. 
I didn't figure any of this out until a day or two later when I got back. So I was just going through this experience, listening and just watching and seeing what I was being shown. So, so the left had all these beautiful, these tunnels, these doorways, I, I guess they're more like doorways. They didn't have any doors on them. It looked like they had been cut right out of the solid marble, beautiful rectangular doors. And in the middle of this corridor were these tables with benches on, on all four sides of these tables. And there were people sitting there and there were two people at every single table all the way down. Right about then, I heard my guide. We all have spirit guides. And my guide said, my name is Alan. I'm your spirit guide. And from that point on, he, he was on my left-hand side. I never actually thought to look over and see him, but he was talking to me in my left ear during this whole process, this whole thing I went through. And he was telling me everything I was seeing. Well, where I was, I was in what is called the orientation center. And just like you mentioned earlier, the typical near-death experience, because I've studied a lot of these too, just like all of you, because they, they fascinate me. I love hearing about people's stories. But usually what happens is the person will have some kind of an accident or like me, they'll die on the operating table and they'll get up out of their bodies. They'll look down and they'll be, they'll be able to see themselves in the scene and they'll see people working on them. They'll see doctors or nurses or they'll, they'll see the actual accident scene. Then they're made aware of a tunnel. And at the end of the tunnel is a white light. And usually what happens is they will be greeted by someone, either a spirit guide or a, a loved one or even an angel who tells them it's not their time and they have to go back. Well, something was dramatically different about mine because I didn't have any of that. I didn't see myself. I didn't see the tunnel and I, I didn't see the white light. What happened to me Somehow, I was transported directly to the other side of that white light. So when people go down the tunnel, and I, I don't know how to, how to describe what the tunnel is other than it's, it's some kind of a, a portal or some way it connects both the earth plane and the other side together. And it facilitates travel between both worlds. So when people are, have finished their lifetimes, they go into the tunnel and at the end of that white light is the orientation center. And that's where I was. So I was able to see the actual tunnel and the white light from the other side of where I was. Whereas a lot of times people can't tell us that because they're sent back. It's not their time to go. So when I was, I was standing there, my guide had just told me that he was a spirit guide. His name was Alan. And as he was talking, he was telling me everything I was seeing. He said, this was an orientation center. And what happens is when people finish their lifetimes, they go through the tunnel, they see the white light. And when they step into the white light, they're right into the orientation center. So he told me to look at the first tunnel. So I walked over and I looked in this tunnel to my left. And when I looked in, it was like looking into space. It was, it was black and there were stars and there were planets and there were galaxies. It was absolutely just beautiful. So he told me to look at the next tunnel so I looked over and a man had just stepped through the tunnel and he was elderly. He was in his eighties or his nineties and he had his right hand holding his chest, his left chest, like people do when they have heart pain. And my guide said that he died from a heart attack 
and he was holding his chest. And he looked very confused. He looked like he didn't know where he was. Well, one of the counselors stood up and I was told that the people that are in this orientation center, they're called orientation counselors. And what their, their whole job is on the other side is to bring people back from earth and explain to them that they just finished a lifetime. And now that they're back on the other side, where the true home is and where they started, where they originated from. So this woman, she stood up, she walked over to the tunnel. She took his two hands in hers and she led him back to the table and they sat down and she sat across from him and she started talking to him. And I was too far away to hear what she was saying to him but she was orientating him back to the other side, explaining that he had just finished a lifetime. He had come through the tunnel. He was back on the other side now. And my guide said to watch him. So I, I started watching him instead of her. And right in front of my eyes, he started changing. He, was, he changed from an elderly man to a man who was in his 30s. And my guide said, all of us are in our 30s on the other side. And I didn't think to ask any questions. I would have asked, well, why is that? But I've, I've, never, I've never known the reason why. And I've heard other NDE people say that, yeah, our ages were in our 30s. But no one never really seems to know why. And that's a question I would have liked to have asked. But the reason that he began to change is because aging and getting older only exists on the earth plane. On the other side, we don't age. We don't get sick. We don't have diseases. We don't die. We have perfect, healthy bodies on the other side. Just as God created us to be, we are perfect over there. And apparently the perfect age is to be in our 30s. Well, here's something else that I thought was absolutely, well, all of it was remarkable, but this, this, the whole orientation center experience just blew my mind. Once he was orientated back to the other side, he knew where he was, he knew who he was and where he had come from. He stood up and he walked off to the right and he went past the columns and he went down three steps and what I saw, I don't know if they call it this, but it's what I call it because it just looked so beautiful. He stepped into what I call the gardens, the absolutely most beautiful place you could possibly imagine with flowers and the, the most, the greenest grass you've ever seen and plants, and flowers, and trees. It was, it, it was like being in the most beautiful garden you can, you can imagine. Well, everybody has a reunion when they get back from the earth plane, and everyone was waiting for him. People that had crossed before him, loved ones, friends, family members, people from this life, as well as all of his loved ones and family and friends from other lifetimes. And the reason for this is that coming to life on earth is a really big deal because it's of all the planets we can go to, apparently earth is the hardest one. So when you come back from a life on earth, it is a really big deal. And you have, everybody has these huge reunions. So this, these areas that I call the gardens are where the reunions take place. And they're absolutely joyous, momentous occasions. Hugging and kissing and applauding and laughing. And it's all absolutely beautiful. And you're, you're back with all the people that you've ever loved again. And here's something else, and, and I don't know how to explain this. I don't know how this works. But when we come into a lifetime here on earth, 
and I, I, all I can say is this has to be something from God. I don't know whether I, I don't know any other way to explain it. But when you come into an earth life, you go into tunnels just like you do when you come back from earth. And somehow during that process, when you're coming, when you go into the tunnel and you come into the body as a soul, you lose all the memories that you've had before about the other side, about past lifetimes, about your memories, your growth, who you are. And the reason for that is so that we can focus 100% on the lifetime that we're living right now. And again, I don't know how they do that. It's like wiping a memory clean. It, they can somehow wipe your memory so that you don't remember. Now, there are some people that I have met that have had pre-birth experiences that they remember, but they're not very many. They're really, really short in terms of the people that actually can remember anything. So they have these wonderful reunions. And when you're back on the other side, everything is available to you again, all of your memories, all of your knowledge, everything you've learned, you're back 100% who you were before you left. And when you get back from an earth plane or you get back from an earth life, you have new knowledge, new learning, everything you learned in that lifetime is with you also. So the only time that we actually lose our memory and have our memory wiped is when we come into an earth plane or come into an earth life. And my guide told me that, he said, the reason it is such a big deal to come into a life on earth is because it's the hardest of all the planets. And that what he meant was that this planet still has war. We have disease, we have death, we have hunger, we have homelessness, we have poverty. None of those things exist on the other planets. There are millions and millions of planets that have the whole scheme where we can come into a lifetime. And I'll, I'll mention that in just a little bit about how I know that. So anyway, after the garden, my guide took me to what is called the orientation or it's not the orientation. It's called the, it's where you have your life review. I think probably a lot of you have heard that, that term before, but every time we come back from an earth life or any life for that matter, one of the first things we do after we have the reunion is that we go and we have a life review. And the idea of a life review is to see if you had a, if you had completed everything that you wanted to accomplish in your lifetime. And here's something else that I, I can't explain. I just know that it's real. When you have a life review, and again, this, this has to be some kind of a God thing, because I, I have no other way to explain it otherwise. But the reason you have a life review and why it's so important is that every single thing in your life has been recorded. Your birth, your school years, your friends, your parents, your, your life all the way through. And it's an extreme detail. It's like watching a movie of your life and you can see yourself. And not only do you see yourself, but you also feel what you felt during that time in your life. So everybody goes to a life review and what they showed me, oh, oh, let me mention one thing before I forget. Every single time that my guide took me to someplace new, he showed me the outside of the building first so I could share with people what it looked like. Like the orientation center was this beautiful, long white marble building. It was beautiful. So he showed me the outside and then he took me on the inside and the life review building, it, it looks, it's like a theater, like a, like a typical movie theater. And you walk in, but there are no seats. You just stand. And it was a round, a round building. And instead of there just being one 
movie screen in front, the move the the building was round, and there were movie movie screens all the way around the top. And all of a sudden, my life started playing, and each screen had a different aspect of my life. One was childhood. One was adolescence, one was teenager, one was going to high school, one was when I was 21. And it was like watching a movie. So when you do your life review, you can see yourself just like you looked like when you were that age. And I only got to see up to age 21, up to where I was in that lifetime. And it was one of the most fantastic parts of my NDE, because somehow every single thing that you experience is recorded, even conversations. It's like your lifetime is in the mind of God. I don't know how other way to describe it. I don't know how they can record everything to such detail. So anything you want to experience about that lifetime you can go to this building where you see your where you see your lifetime and review it, and you can review any particular period of time. So that's called a life review. The next thing he did, my guide Alan took me to another building. Again, the outside of it was marble. The place that he took me to, it seemed like it was it was just one specific area of the other side. And the theme of this area that he took me to was one of learning. It, it's the place on the other side where people go, where they learn and they experience and they grow. That seems to be the, one of the overall themes about the other side is it's all about learning and growing and developing. So the building he took me to next was where you can go if you want to see past lifetimes, because all of us have had many, many, many lifetimes and not all of them on earth. So we walked in and again, it was a round building and it looked just like a theater. Again, no chairs, but just the theater. And this building only had one screen. So that would look like if we were gonna go see a movie today, there would just be one movie screen. And on the screen, they started playing past lifetimes. And they were my past lifetimes. And they showed me three of them. And the first one, I was a fisherman. And I was in a little raggedy boat with a fishing net. And I would, just like you see in documentaries and in TV shows, I, I tossed the net into the water. And I would bring the net in. I would pull the net in with the fish. So that was one lifetime. And I got the feeling, you, you have an idea of where that lifetime occurred. And that lifetime was somewhere in the Middle East. I was a fisherman. And my job in that lifetime was to help feed my village. And that's what I did. That was my contribution as a fisherman. The next lifetime they showed me was I was a, a like a monk. And I had a shaved head. I was wearing a red gown or a, a tunic of some time of some kind. And I was in a monastery. And my job was to teach the children about being a mon about being a monk. And it was so extraordinary because when you look at that, you don't look like yourself like you do now, but you know that it's you you know that it's you having that past lifetime. And the third one they showed me was of a, of a village. And I was the person that fixed people's shoes. This was a lifetime in somewhere in Eastern Europe. And I had a wheelbarrow. And my job was to go around the village and fix people's shoes. I would take them, put them in the wheelbarrow, take them back to my shop, I guess, wherever I went, and I fixed them. And in this, in this 
vignette of this lifetime, I was pushing this wheelbarrow on a cobblestone street. And it was so, it's, it's hard to explain what this is like when you do a life review, but you can see yourself just like you look in a mirror. You're, it's absolutely perfect. It's somehow, I don't know how they do it, but everything is, everything is so recorded perfectly. So that's what we do. We go and we can see past lifetimes. So we do our life review. We can look at past lifetimes. The next place he took me to, it looked like, again, from the outside, it looked like a sports stadium. And it was absolutely huge. It was probably one of the largest buildings that I saw. And something that people ask me a lot is, what is the nature of these buildings? And all I can say to them is I, I don't understand the physics. Because you would think that if you're in another dimension on the other side, that things wouldn't be solid. But they were. When I, went, when I was in that orientation center and I was looking at the tunnels, I took my left hand and I put it on one of the tunnels and it was solid. It was cool like you would expect marble to be. It was cool to the touch, but it was solid. And I can't explain how that works or, or how they do that, but everything is solid there. So anyway... This building was a stadium. Again, it was solid. It was beautiful. It was, it was an oval, an oval-shaped building like we have today, like stadiums, like football stadiums. So we walked in, and there were thousands upon thousands of, of seats. This building was enormous. And here is when I, I met the person who was not my guide. I, I met several people who were not my guide. I didn't see this person, but he was behind me. And his job on the other side was to run the planetariums. Do you all know what planetariums are? You, where you can, you walk in and you can look up at the ceiling and they show, um, they, sh they show galaxies, they show solar systems and planets. Well, that's exactly what this building was, but it was far different than the ones we have on Earth. So my guide, I was standing in the middle, and there was somebody behind me, and it was like this person ran the, the planetarium, and there was nobody else in this facility except me and my guide in this other person behind me. I never saw him, but I could hear his voice. And he said, let's begin. So all the lights went off. It was pitch black. And I sat down and I looked up at the ceiling. And he said to me, he said, when you look at the stars, this is what you see. And what he meant by that was, wasn't just me. He meant everybody on earth. When you look up at the stars, this is what you see. And he started showing our planets in our solar system, Jupiter, Saturn, Mars, Venus, all of our planets that we know of our, that make up our solar system. And it was beautiful. It was absolutely beautiful. And, and the planets he was showing me, our solar system, it was like looking at them from, from space. It was like being in orbit. Each planet they showed me I was looking at it from orbit and I could see the details like, like with, like with Jupiter, I could see the big red spot. You know, that spot that's on Jupiter. It, it's like, um, it's, it's what, it's what they call, it's a huge windstorm and it looks like a red spot to us. I could see that. Well, then he said, when we look at the stars, meaning people who were on the other side, he said, when we look at the stars, this is what we see. And all of a sudden, they started or he started showing me planets, one planet after another, dozens, 
then hundreds, then thousands, then millions of planets. And they were, some were blue, some were red, some were green, some were brown. And he was showing me that there are so many, many planets in the universe that we can have lifetimes on. And he said to me, what I'm trying to remember exactly what he said. Sometimes I don't, I don't get the exact words, but he said, when you look at the stars or, or when we look at the stars, there is far more life in the universe than you can possibly imagine. And it was, it was probably one of my most favorite parts of my NDE because you could see that on the, that, there are millions of planets we can go to and have, incar in, have, have incarnations on. The, uh, the Earth wasn't the only one. So that was part of, I think, one of my most favorite parts of my whole experience was the planetarium. And when I finish this lifetime, I am looking so forward to going back to that building and looking at all the different planets and people have asked me, they said, well, have you, were you able to see any life forms on those planets? And I couldn't. All I knew is that they were full of life forms. And I was up so high. It was like looking at the planet from orbit. I wasn't able to see the, the actual topography because I was up too high. But I could just see the actual planets and knew that there were life forms just like we are, NDA but they're or, different. And there are, NDA? NDA? It, it, it almost NDA. is unlimited. What the fuck is it? Learning, are you still there? Are you all still there? Hey, Chuck. Yes, can you hear here. me? Yes. Okay, okay I, thought, I thought I lost you there. No, I, there was somebody that wasn't muted, so I went ahead and muted them. Okay, all right, good. So you're still there. Yes. So that's that's one of the things that I want to go back to is is that planetarium and see those planets again and and just look at all the the vast life forms because the one thing that experience taught me about the planetarium is that there is no end to knowledge. There's just no there's no limit. There's no end to God in terms of God's knowledge. And one of the things that we do on the other side is we love to learn. We love to experience and we love to grow. It's almost like God pre-wired all of us to love to learn. Because where my guide showed me at this part of the other side was all about learning. And here is something that I was so thrilled with. On the other side... God created us with gifts. We all have been given gifts. And Chuck, yours might have been medicine. Other people might be the gift of music or dance or writing. And, and, and we can explore these gifts on the other side to our heart's desire. And I think that's one of the reasons that when we come into earth, so many of us also have that desire for learning and growing. It's like we're pre-wired for it and knowledge never ends. And that's what the planetarium experience taught me is that there, there are limitless, limitless planets that you can have lifetimes on. And if you can think about what those cultures would be like and how much learning there could be, you start to realize that your learning truly is unlimited. Just like here, there is no limit to what you can learn. You don't all of a sudden say, okay, my mind is too full. I can't learn anything else. That never happens. Learning is eternal. So I wanted to share that because it was such a, a, a wonderful part about my experience. Okay, the next place he took me to this, this building was unique. It wasn't long. It was, all of these buildings were enormous. They were absolutely just gigantic. And this one was too. 
but it was different than the others. Do all of you remember, uh, there's a building in Rome and it's a round building with the dome on top. I don't recall what that building is called, but that's what this building looked like. It was huge, it was round, and it had the white marble columns all around the outside of this circular building. And there was a dome on top, absolutely beautiful, spectacular white marble building just round. And my guide said, this is where we go to plan our lifetimes. So he took me in, and again, a lot of the, 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 the interior was made of white, pristine, beautiful marble, just absolutely gorgeous. And he showed me two scrolls, and one had a red ribbon on it, and the other one had a blue ribbon on it. And I don't know what the differences were. I didn't think to ask. But what that was, what it was showing me was that our lifetimes are planned. None of us come into earth without a plan. And lifetimes take, they're very, very detailed. In a lifetime, you plan where you're going to be born, what country, what language you're going to learn, who your parents are going to be, where you're going to go to school what your profession's going to be. Are you gonna have kids? Who your spouse is gonna be? All of these things are planned into a lifetime. What's also planned is your goals. You're, you come into a lifetime with goals and a purpose. What do you wanna experience? What do you wanna learn in this lifetime? And it's also about putting in challenges. And here's something that I, I had a hard time trying to understand at first. But when we come into a lifetime, there is a specific purpose for why we do so. And we put challenges in our lives. And the reason for that is nothing more than to learn and to grow. And on the other side, our lifetimes our existence is perfect. The other side doesn't have any of the things we have to deal with here. Like I mentioned earlier, the other side doesn't have war. There's no starvation. There's no homelessness. There's no disease. There's no death. It's absolutely a perfect, beautiful paradise. That's the best way to describe it. It's, it's home. It's heaven. It's the afterlife. It's just wonderful and I can't wait to get back but what we come in for is is to learn and here's something that took me a while to understand the earth plane has a lot of challenges there's a lot of sorrow here and there's a lot of pain but we come here for that to learn because believe it or not on the other side you still learn you still grow, you still study, but it's not like when you come in and have an experience on the earth. That's where you really learn. And the analogy I use to try to explain to people is like, it's trying to explain what it's like to ride a bike and you've never ridden a bike before. And you can explain to someone what it feels like, but until they actually do it, they don't learn they will never know what it feels like. So that's one of the reasons that we come into earth because there are going to be painful experiences. We lose people here. We have breakups. We have job losses. We have illnesses. All these things happen here. But when you look back at your life, it's the things that were the painful things that taught us the most. That, that we learn from the most. There's a wonderful pastor out of California who I watch all the time. And his name is Rick Warren from Saddleback Church. Have you heard of him? Yeah, I, I listen to him once a week. I, I just think he's wonderful. 
Well, one of the things that he says all the time is don't waste your pain. In other words, everyone is going to experience pain when they come here, but don't waste it. Take your pain, learn from it, and share it with others. And that's what I've tried to do is to share my experiences with others and help them understand that, you know, life can be very painful here, but we actually charted that. And that's what's on those scrolls inside that building. When I, I hope I took the scroll. I don't remember which one I picked up either the blue ribbon or the red ribbon, but I picked up one of them. I took off the tie and I, and I unfolded the scroll on this marble table. And I could see that there was writing all over the scroll. Do you all remember calligraphy? What that looks like? It's that ancient art of writing that you use the ink well, you write everything out. Everything that we have planned for our lifetime is written on these scrolls. Your, your, what you want to be, what you want to learn, what you want to become, it's all written down so our lifetimes are planned. The only thing I didn't know is, do we plan our exits? Do we plan when we're going to die and leave this planet? I couldn't figure that out. They didn't tell me. Well, I tried to go and read the scroll to see what was on it. But as soon as I did that, it folded up. And I wasn't able to read that. And my guide explained to me that you're not allowed to remember your chart because then it would nullify the test. One of the reasons we come here is to overcome obstacles. And we put in our, in our life obstacles, things to learn from. So we aren't allowed to remember what our challenges are because that would, that would just make the whole thing void you wouldn't you wouldn't learn from it and the test is to see how you do during that period and will you do and accomplish and become the person that you wanted to become because rick warren this pastor i was mentioning he said everything you have in your lifetime whether it's possessions or things or money or material goods None of those things go with you when you leave this life. The only thing you take with you is your character and what you've learned. And that is absolutely true. Because on the other side, what is truly valued is what you learn. And they, they don't care about how much money you made or what kind of house you lived in or what kind of car you drove. What they care about is who did you help? How did your life make a difference? Did you help other people? Did you have compassion for them? Did you try to make their lives better? That's what they care about. So anyway, that was called the life, the where we do our lives and plan our lifetimes. And there's something else that I wanted to mention to you. And at the time when this happened, Again, I was only 21, so I didn't really know what was going on at the time. I didn't know that I had died until after I came back. So this part, I, I, I don't understand all that well. I just know that it's real. But have you all heard the term soulmates? Maybe some of you have heard that term. Well, the soulmate is your perfect match from God that was created at the same moment you were. So all of us have soulmates that are with us throughout our, enti our ex entire existence for eternity, but we don't always have lifetimes with our soulmates. But on the other side, your love mate, your perfect mate is with you. So everybody has a life partner. So if you don't have anybody in earth that has ever been your love or your life partner, it doesn't mean you're alone. On the other side, you have this person. And my guide 
said, he, he told me what soulmates were. And then he took me to a part of this building. Again, it was absolutely enormous. And they were full of bookshelves. Well, these bookshelves had the names of your soulmates on them. And this is something that I that blew my mind because I could see everything just like I can see all of you. The vision was clear and it was just like I can see you right now. He took me to the book of my soulmate. And what the book was, it was a it's an accounting of that person's lifetime, how many lifetimes they've had, where they've had them, what they learned. And here was the interesting part. All it, it looked like these books looked like Encyclopedia Britannica's. They were about two or three inches thick. And on the outside binding, like when you look in a library, you can see the name of the book. Well, the name wasn't written diagonally. It was written vertically. And there was a name on every one of the books. And that name is the name of your soulmate. Well, mine said N-I-N-A, Nina. My soulmate's name is Nina. And it's written vertically, and it was written in gold letters. So if any of you ever think that you're alone, you're not. We all have soulmates. So he wanted me to see that and to share that, that we do have dual creations that are our perfect match. So God created a perfect match for us. So that was that building where I saw the scrolls and, and saw the, the soulmates and that we all have them. Well, the next place he took me to, and this was by far the largest building of, of anything that I saw there. And it was so large. Again, I couldn't see the end of the building, but it was rectangular in shape. And it had marble columns. Again, like so many of these buildings, it had marble columns in front. There must have been 30 or 40 marble columns that went, ran around the, the top of this building. And it looked like the Supreme Court building. You know, you have the stairs you walk up and you've got the columns up at the top. It looked just like this. So again, he showed me the outside of the building. I didn't know what it was until he took me inside. So we get inside and it was a library. And on this part of the other side, there are many, many libraries. There are temples, temples dedicated to different aspects of learning. Like if you wanted to learn about music, music throughout the eons, throughout the centuries, you can go to this building and learn about music. There's also those, these temples for literature or art or theater, anything you want to learn. This is the place that you would go to to experience this part of the other side where all the knowledge is kept. Well, anyway, this building, when I got inside, it was a library. It was so large. It was like the orientation center that I could not see the end. That's how large this building was. And it was a library. And something that was really fascinating, and again, I don't know how to explain how this happens, but it, it just does. If you wanted to learn about science, for example, let's say you wanted to look up molecular biology, for example, it would take you days, hours, days to walk to the area where this particular subject might be in this library. And that's for everything, every subject. Somehow, all you have to do is think about what you want to learn about, what you want to study, and you instantly go there. Again, I can't explain how that works, just that it does. So much of life over there is thought. So you don't have to spend endless hours walking to where these subjects are that you want to study. You can just think about it and you go right there. So that was one incredible 
thing he showed me. The other thing he showed me was to the left of this library, just like modern libraries we have today, there are rooms off to the left that are rooms you can go to to learn specific things. And back then when this happened, we didn't have flat screen TVs like we have today. And each one of these rooms had what looked like a flat screen TV on it. And it was huge. It wasn't like the theater, like when you go to see your lifetime or you do your life review, it wasn't that large. It was like a 50 inch or 60 inch screen mounted on this wall. And to the left were all these individual rooms. And I didn't know what they were until my guide showed me. He took me to a room and there, there weren't, they weren't large. They were maybe 15 by 10 square feet. And they were for learning and watching the video screen. Well, you could, anything that you wanted to learn in life, any event, any circumstance, any event that happened on the earth, you can walk into these rooms and you can watch them unfold on these video screens. Again, I don't know how this works, but there was a girl, there was a woman who was sitting in this room. She was wearing a purple gown and she had black jet hair, jet black hair down to her waist. And her back was to me and she was sitting on a couch and she was watching a video. Well, here's what absolutely blew my mind. I was on the other side in the library, in this room, watching this girl, watching a history, a part of Earth's history that happened 200 years ago. And what she was watching was a battle, a battle that took place between the Native Americans Plains tribes and the United States Cavalry. She wanted to go to this room to learn about that particular aspect of history. And I remember thinking, how is it possible that this woman is watching something that happened in history on Earth 200 years ago? We didn't have video cameras back then. I don't think we even had cameras per se. That's when my guide told me everything is recorded. So what she was watching was in real time, that battle. And that, that just blew my mind. Anything you wanna learn about, you can go to these rooms. If you wanted to learn about in World War II, D-Day, June 4th, 1944, if you wanted to learn about the invasion of France in Normandy, you could go in this room and you could watch and see exactly what these men saw during the during the landing of Normandy. If you wanted to watch what happened on the Titanic in 1912, you could go and watch and, and see exactly what happened. Anything that you wanted to learn about, you can go to these rooms to see. And I, I think that was part of that that part of the other side was probably one of the most interesting to me. Because like all of you, I love to learn also. But you can actually go to these rooms. And even if you didn't live a lifetime during that time period, you can watch it at any particular time in Earth's history. You can watch this. And, and I, I, don't know, I don't know the mechanics of how this worked. I don't know if there were chips that you put into the television or the video. I don't know how you got that particular era to play but it just does and you can watch it so that was the library and the woman watching the video it was absolutely fascinating and i was i was so excited because i love to learn probably like many of you that that's there for us and when we cross and leave this lifetime that learning never ends and just because you didn't live during a, during a, particular, a particular period of Earth's history 
doesn't mean you can't see it. So you'll be able to learn and experience everything. Well, here's something else that I wanted to tell you because, again, I don't understand how it works. I just know that it does. Do any of you remember the series on Star Trek that was called um, Star Trek Gen Generations? Do any of you remember that show with Captain Picard or Captain Picard? It's okay if, if you don't. In the show, there is something that they do that's called a holodeck. And on the ship, they can walk into this holodeck and they can program what era of history they want to see. They can program hundreds of years ago and they can walk into the holodeck and it's like walking in to that particular moment in history. So with the room what that I saw in the library where you can actually view a, view a part of history, the other side also has a place where you can go where you can do exactly what they did on a holodeck. You can step in to history. Nobody can see you, but you can step in and you can see, touch, experience, smell, everything that those people experienced during that lifetime. So if you wanted to learn what it was like to have the pyramids being built, you can go into that time in history and see it. You don't actually have to just watch it, but you can actually experience it. And again, I, I don't know how that can be possible. How is that possible? I don't know. All I know is that it's real. And that's one of the things that I am so excited about when I finish this lifetime is going back and learning and exploring. And there are so many parts of history that I wanna learn about that you just can't learn about that while you're here on earth. We just have books here, but on the other side, you can actually have the exact experience. So that part I wanted to share with you because it was, it's just so fantastic that there's so much for us to look forward to. Here's the other thing I wanted to share with you. On the other side, everything that's built here exists on the other side. And it's almost like beautiful buildings that we have on earth have come from the other side first. They exist on the other side before they exist on earth. And I'll, I'll try to explain how that works. My guide took me to a castle on the other side. And a castle, just like you would see in medieval Europe, the castles that were built. But this castle was perfect. And it had just like it was built out of the rock, out of the stone, and it was absolutely perfect, just like on the day it was finished on the earth plane. So somehow, everything that's on the other side, all the buildings that are there, they're duplicated here on earth. So, and it wasn't just one castle, every castle that was built on earth, you can visit on the other side. And here's the part that, again, also blew my mind. He took me to the outside of the castle first, and it was huge. It was a huge castle, and it was an exact replica of a castle in medieval Europe. I don't know if it was in France or England. I don't know that kind of detail. He just showed me the outside of it. So he said, walk in. So I walked in, and it was absolutely beautiful just like they looked like back then and on the ground there was red carpeting beautiful red brilliant carpet all along the floor of the castle just like you see in castles nowadays and on the left and on the right were these enormous long walls tall walls of this of the of the castle and when you looked at the walls, you could see 
life-size portraits of every person who had ever lived in that castle. So the king, the queen, everybody had a life-size picture of what they looked like and what they wore for all the centuries. And, and many of these castles had hundreds of pictures of these people. They were life-size. And my guide explained to me that if you wanted to learn about that particular Earth's history, you could go to this area on the other side and you could see the castles. And it wasn't just castles, it was all kinds of architecture that exists on the Earth. And the, and the idea is to see what it was like for them, what, the, what these castles looked like. Well, in front of every single picture was a podium and there was a book on it and the book was, was laid open. And my guide explained to me that everything is recorded, including a person's lifetime. So let's say, let's say you Chuck, let's say you were on the other side and you wanted to go learn about what it was like in medieval Europe during King George V. Some, for example, you could go to this castle that he lived in. You could walk in. You could see what he looked like on this life-size picture. And you could see what the clothing was, what they wore. You could look at the book that was on this podium. And here's the part that blew my mind also. The book that was on the podium was an exact replica of what his life was like. It was so detailed. It had what decisions did he make in his lifetime? What was his lifetime about? What did he do? Was he a good king? Was he a, a, a despot? Was he, did he take care of the people? Did he not? And here is the extraordinary part about this. Because everything is recorded. Even conversations are recorded. So you can look, you can scroll through that book that's on that podium and see conversations that he had with other people in his life. And again, I, I don't know how that's possible. I don't understand the mechanism, but it's true. You can learn every single, every single thing about that person's lifetime. It just blew my mind how that, how that was possible, but it is. Here's the other, here's another part. As I looked off to the right, there was a, a circular staircase. You know how in castles, they have circular staircases that go up to the next levels? Well, this castle had that too. And as I looked off to the right, there was a woman coming down. She had strawberry blonde hair. She was wearing an orange, kind of an orange reddish gown. A lot of people wear things that look like robes or tunics over there. And some people just wear jeans and a t-shirt. I don't know why they wear what they wear, but you can wear anything you want. So here, here was something that was so fantastic. She was dressed in the kind of clothes that people wore during that period. So she, so she was a living piece of history that you could see what she wore, what they, what they dressed like. She walked up to me and she could see me because she walked up to me and she said, is there anything I can help you find? And to this day, this is the thing that frustrates me so much because I could have asked this girl anything. I could have asked her, where was I? What was going on? I was supposed to be having surgery. Where in the world am I? Who are you? What is this building? All that learning came after the fact. So you know what I said to her? I said, oh, no, thank you. I'm just looking. Because I didn't know what else to say. I, I didn't know what to say to her. I, I said what you say when you walk into a retail store and you say, oh, no, I'm just looking. I could have asked her anything. Well, I come to find out that, remember in the early part when we started talking about people have jobs on the other side, like the orientation counselors, people have 
jobs, but they aren't jobs like we have here, where you have to choose a career because you've got to pay your mortgage or you've got to pay utilities or car insurance. They don't have the same kind of economics that we have here where you have to earn money. It's not like that there. You do things just because you love it. And this girl, her passion on the other side was history about this particular time in Earth's history. So if you wanted to walk into a castle and learn about that history, she was a walking scholar. She was what we would call scholars on the other side. What her expertise was, was all about this particular Earth's history. She knew all about the kings, all about the queens, all about the battles that were fought, the wars, the people, everything. So again, another example of the importance of learning and growing and knowledge that it never ends. So when I get back, I want to go talk to that girl and I want to say, you know what? I am so sorry that I just said, I'm only looking. I didn't know where I was. I'm, I just want to go back and I want to learn about that period of history. It was just absolutely wonderful. And something else that I wanted to share with you all to kind of give you a flavor of what it's like there. Anything that you love to do on earth is magnified on the other side. It's, it's, I don't know how to explain it, but it's absolute joy. It's paradise. And you can do anything you do on earth. You can hike in nature. You can swim. They have oceans there and beautiful beaches. You can read literature. You can go to music concerts. You can visit with friends, loved ones, and just visit. Anything you want to do, you can do over there. And that's one of the most, that, that's, the, that's the part of my experience that gives me so much hope, not just for me, but for all of us, that there's a reason for all of this on earth, and that it's not our real home, that the other side is our true home. And here is the last part, and perhaps one of the most profound parts of my near-death experience. Oh, let me mention this before I forget. All our animals are there too. Animals, I, again, I don't know how, how this works, but it does. My guide showed me two of my cats that I had growing up. I didn't have time to play with them because everything was moving so quickly, but every animal that you have ever had in your lifetime exists on the other side. They have souls too, and they live on. So you never, ever have to lose your animals again. They're there. So here's the last part. When everything was shown to me on the other side, again, it was just this very small place. The other side is like a planet. It's huge. But this was one small part of the other side that he showed me. I don't know why he showed me just this area, but he did. So he took me to a field, a beautiful wildflower field with flowers and grasses, and they were about knee high, the most beautiful meadow I could possibly imagine. And I was there by myself. Well, just in a, in a couple of instances, a couple of seconds, another person showed up and this person was different than all the other people I had seen. This person was Jesus and he was wearing a white robe and I could see his hands. I could see his feet. He was wearing sandals, gold colored sandals, a white robe and a golden sash around his waist. And he was different than everybody else I saw because he had so much light and so much energy. He had so much light that I couldn't even see his face. It was like just a ball of light where his head was. And he spoke to me. And he said, you must tell them 
there is no death. And the very second he said that, I woke up back in the operating room. And what he meant by that, you must tell them there is no death, is that I was given an assignment, kind of like a mission, that my life was about to tell people that life doesn't end when we finish this lifetime here, that life is eternal. You must tell them there is no death. So all these years, I have been trying to share my story, just like I'm sharing it with you, exactly as it happened, and to let people know that there really is no death, that life continues for eternity, that we are eternal beings. And anyone that you lost in your lifetime, whether it's a spouse or children or siblings or loved ones, all of them are on the other side. There's a great quote, and I'm sure a lot of you know this person. Do you remember Billy Graham? He said something in one of his audiences that I've always related to, and it always seems like it wraps up for me exactly what my experience was like. And he said, don't worry about me when I die. Heaven is my home. I'm just passing through this world. And that's true. Heaven is our home. And all of us are just passing through this lifetime, a lifetime of learning and growing. And with that, that's how my experience ended, was when I woke up in the operating room. And I asked the surgeon, I said, what just happened? Thinking maybe he knew what it, thinking maybe he knew what happened, but he said, we lost you there. You died and you were gone for seven minutes. Well, here's the thing I, I just could not understand. It felt like I was there for two hours on the other side from everything they showed me, but it was only seven minutes. And that's when I learned that the other side doesn't have time like we do. Time here for us is linear, but over there, somehow, time doesn't exist. So when you, if, if you have a spouse, let's say you've been married for 40 years and your spouse dies and goes to the other side, for that spouse, you're only going to be gone for maybe three or four weeks from their standpoint, even though for you, you might be here for another 30 years. Time is different for them. So they miss us, but they don't miss us like we miss them because the time is different. And that's something I wanted to share too. So that was it. That was my, that was my near-death experience. I know, I hope it didn't go too long. I know, I know it was, it's, it's a lot of stuff to digest and 